Uh, today's webinar is going to be great. I'm super excited. So, you know, I wanted to talk to you about David. So, I think you guys got the email, a little bit of the background, right? The original hitch, uh, the movie was based after. So, I got connected to David like um, a while ago. This is like many, many years ago. I was still like a college student back then and uh, got connected to David. And uh, since then, uh, we didn't really keep in touch. But like until a couple years ago, we got connected again. I was on um, David's podcast and we started talking and we really got along, you know, we thought really similarly about life, about trading and about everything else. And um, so David's been in our chat room for uh, about a couple of years now and, uh, you know, kind of trading the style. So he's really been crushing it uh, and brings like a little unique approach to trading. Uh, but what I really want you to learn from him today is about psychology, about mindset, right? And that's the topic for today. Man, I am pumped. I am psyched. So many things that I want to go over with all of you. So just sit back. Let's talk about mental toughness. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm going to give me a great intro. For 23 years, I taught men how to go and mentally prepare to go and meet women. Basically to go grab their you-know-what and date the women that they want to date love the women they want to love, have relationships with the women they want to do, but it was all mindset. And I'll give you my trading journey, and I'm going to explain something to you because I want all of you to understand that what I teach, I went through, because I truly believe that the market is the greatest therapist you're ever going to go to. Forget about paying for therapy. Look at your losses in the stock market as therapy. So if you lose $100 on a trade, you basically spent $100 that day to learn something you needed to learn because that screen is a mirror and it reflects back all your subconscious programming and all the things in life that you have never really been good at. Because when you have your money on the line and you need to perform and you have to answer to only yourself, that's when you can really trick and fool yourself over and over and over again. So I started trading about four years ago. And like most of you, I was, you know, confident. I was successful. I mean, come on. I mean, the movie Hitch was based on my life. I was the guy that men and women went to to learn how to connect with the opposite sex. I can go meet any woman I want, any place, any time. I always can have something to talk about. And I was super, super confident. I was successful in everything I did. So I went into the market, probably like a lot of you go into the market. I'm going to kill it. I was a paper trading champion. I mean, I would go and I remember sitting in the hotel in Austin, Texas after like a couple of months of learning and I was paper trading Tesla and I was like, oh, that's such an easy $3,000 today. And then I met Miss Netflix. So I started trading live. And I remember battling Netflix one day, battling you like that. It's instead of letting the market give me the money that I deserve, I went and battled Netflix. And I remember my girlfriend at the time, she had to pull me from my chair because my eyes were glassed over and I literally looked like a psychotic person, somebody who, you know, was just obsessed. I lost $6,800 that day battling Netflix. I just kept going in. I kept seeing trades that I thought existed. I kept going into it. I'm going to win. And then when I was down, I had to go and beat Netflix, right? You ever do that? You know, your revenge trade on the same stock that you think beat you, that has it out for you. So instead of looking at your other screens and instead of getting a trade that actually sets up, you can't wait to get back in. And that's what I did with Netflix. And at the end of that day, I realized something. This is not an easy business. Now, people tell you that all the time. But once again, when you go into this business, you know, you study some TA, you take a class, you think this can't be that hard because in reality, they're just patterns. I mean, they're repetitive patterns based on human emotion. It's not difficult. What's difficult is what's between your ears. What's difficult is your life experiences that keep coming up. So the first year of trading, I pretty much, I'm proud. I didn't lose that much money. I didn't blow out an account. Sure, did I have days that were absolutely brutal? Oh yeah, I've had $10,000, $13,000, I had a $48,000 losing day. But I did not blow out an account and I did not come up negative. Even after my first year, I think I was only down about $10,000. Why? Because the technical analysis works, but what I realized during that process is that my brain needed to be fixed. 
So every single day, I had to be accountable to myself. I mean, how many of you guys and girls, okay, how many of you are really good at being accountable for yourself? Not many of us, right? How many of us can really look at ourselves at the end of every single day and say to ourselves, oh man, I really suck. That's why I love the other day, if you guys were listening to Jared, when he was saying, man, I suck today, I suck today. I love that. I love that because these guys are real and that's what it takes to be successful in this and anything else in life. So I realized, okay, in order to become a consistent trader, I needed to be Tom Brady on the sidelines. I needed to be that athlete on the sidelines that threw two or three interceptions, went back to the sidelines, took the Microsoft Surface Pad and looked at it and realized where my mistake was. How many of you actually go and write down your trades and the mistakes? How many of you understand that you're getting caught at the same sucker pattern over and over again? How many of you understand that you're losing the same way over and over again? And how many of you have dived deep enough to really truly understand that these issues are just mirrors of what you have been doing wrong and have been messing up your entire life. This business felt like I was run over by a tractor trailer at times. I mean, it was the most unbelievable feeling to get consistent. And I can tell you since last September, which is six months, I've had three losing weeks and the most I lost was $500. So consistency took a long time because I was that person that I would go and make money and then I'd just give it all back, right? I'd make money for six weeks and then I would give it all back, right? You know that feeling? All of a sudden you make it for six weeks and then you do something stupid like an earnings trade and then you just go and you just give it all back in just literally the after hours, you know? So I was doing the same thing. Every mistake that you guys are probably making, I made as well. And that's what life is all about. But the difference is, is that I know from coaching how to hold myself accountable. Now, what I want you to do is write down in the chat, how many of you can be honest about this, okay? There's no grading, there's no judgment here. When I coach people, okay? When I, th thank you, Jason, I, I love that. We're gonna take questions at the end, but that's so great. How many of you are really honest with yourself? Answer one, if you're really honest with yourself, and two, how many of you are still kind of bullshitting yourself and having Groundhog Day over and over again, but not really going over the stuff that you need. Let me see some of these answers in there. There's gotta be some twos in there, folks. Come on, there you go, Rich. There you go, Andrew. There you go, Leo, Josh. There you go, Steven. There the twos are showing up. Come on, let the two, 1.5 is a fair compromise. It definitely is. I'm all throws a three in there. Alexander, you got a two. Peter, you got a two. Praven, you got a two. All right, good. Okay, there's some honest answers there. Okay, the reason why, okay, one and two and I do good then I fall off a cliff that's so common okay what happens is, is that we're in a business okay where we can bullshit ourselves every single day we're in a business where we can forget I mean how many of you wake up in the morning and say to yourself like Bill Murray did in Groundhog Day today is going to be a great day you know because you watch some good videos at night maybe you checked out Mark Douglas and he did some mindset stuff maybe you watched you know Jared's incredible Wednesday you know videos and you feel really, really good and you got the patterns inside your head and then guess what? You wake up that morning and go, today's gonna be the day that I take every single trade that goes back into the eight, the 20 and the 50 and then all of a sudden, okay, there's the candles and it's coming down and it looks like a waterfall and it looks like a big red knife stabbing you almost like the same knife from Michael Myers and Halloween and it's coming down and coming down and it's coming right into the eight and the 20 and that's your trading plan. And then you look to yourself and go, it's not gonna work. And you start masturbating inside your brain and go, it's not gonna work this time. It's not gonna work this time. And you basically don't commit to your word. And then all of a sudden, instead of having your order waiting and ready down there, you don't do it. And then all of a sudden you get a green candle and you sit there and you say to yourself, oh, look at the green candle. It's gonna go back to being red. And then you see another green candle and another green candle, and then you start slumping into your chair like this. And you start saying to yourself, all right, the next trade I'm going to do, the next trade based on my plan, you know, which is whatever your plan is, because we all trade differently. The next trade, I'm going, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And then all of a sudden, here it comes again. And you say to yourself, God, this is the pullback I'm looking for. This is the retracement that I'm looking for. It's coming back into the eight, it's coming back into the 20. It's like a 50% retracement. It's part of my plan. I'm gonna have my thing there. I got your hand on the button, then all of a sudden, your finger's on the button, your share size is shared accordingly. And then all of a sudden, it's almost like you're a marionette. Somebody just reaches that arm up in the air like this. 
and it goes flying up in the air. And then all of a sudden, okay, you don't press that button and you sit there. And once again, what happens? The stock does exactly what it's going to do. It goes up. It makes a new high. You would have made money. You would have made 2R on your money. You would have done great. And now the frustration starts to come in. You start to feel really anxious and you start to say to yourself, man, I woke up this morning. I was in such a good mood. Today was the day that I was going to change. I was going to change. I, I spent so much time. I, I, I was watching everything. I was listening to what Jared and Amal said. I, I was going to do it. And then all of a sudden, what do you do? Okay. You sit there. And then you go and you manufacture a trade. It's not part of your plan. You see something you think you see because you realize that you would have made your money for the day. You would have been done for the day. And then you finally hit the button and go, yeah, this is it. And then you add to that trade. And the next thing you know, the market does the little drunken girl dance at a bar. You ever watch that drunken girl at a bar? You know, she's super, super hot. And you don't go and talk to her. And you're watching her. And all of a sudden, you're like, yeah, this is going to be the time that... I talked to her and then all of a sudden she makes a move and she kind of falls down and then some guy picks her up all of a sudden and he's the one that goes home with her and you're sitting there going, man, I didn't do it again. The drunken girl falls down, the stock goes crazy and it starts going T -t 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 all over the place. And the next thing you know, instead of being up for the day, you're down 150 bucks. And then you say to you, you get frustrated and you get angry and you go, I'm going to come back for the afternoon. And the afternoon training, face it. I mean, the afternoon trading sucks. I'm not a big afternoon trader, but I will play power hour between three and four because there are some amazing moves in the spy. But that comes to the next conversation that you need to have with yourself. Are you dating stocks that are way out of your league? I mean, when I was coaching guys for 25 years, I would guy would come to me and go, man, I really want to date like really, really hot women. And then I look at him, I go, have you ever dated a hot woman in your whole entire life? And they go, no. I go, well, we're going to have to work our way up a scale. You see, you're going to have to date like General Electric before you start having sex with Tesla. I mean, that's just the way it goes in life, okay, is that you are going to have to start small. So how many of you right now, and let's be honest, okay, how many of you are dating stocks? And I'm going to give you my definition of dating stocks. I have a rule, and this is a rule that I follow. I never trade a stock unless I have dated that stock for a month. On one of my screens, and I've got six screens up, I will put the stocks that I'm dating up on the two top screens. I'll put it up with Heike and Aishi Candles because I want to see the trends. I'll put it up with the EMA Cloud because I want to see what it does when it's under it. I'll put my little RSI up when it's above 50. Does it stay with it? I date this. How spready is the stock? How good is the stock? How good are the, you know, the fills on the stock? I will date a stock for 30 days. Why? Because that's what a relationship is all about. How many of you are just jumping from stock to stock? You're basically having sex with different stocks every single day that you've never even gone out on a date with. Write one if that's your trading behavior right now, okay? If you're basically jumping from stock to stock that you don't even know and you're trading stocks that you don't even understand, that's just about every single person. I bet you every single person writes a one in there, okay? Okay, good. You know, I'm gonna tell you why you struggle. Because you do not know what these stocks are. You do not know if they're psychotic. You don't know. Lucid is my date. Very funny. You don't know how they move in certain ways. I mean, if you ask me how Apple moves or MU moves or Twitter or General Electric moves, I can tell you how they follow the patterns. I can tell you when they get a little spready. I can tell you what happens. You know, TJ, very good. You try to get the same five or six. But here's the thing that most of you don't know. I basically look at stocks as people. I look at them as women. To me, Tesla is that drunk girl who gets on top of the bar, screams and yells, gyrates her hips, dances, and then when you go home and have sex with her, she just lays there like a dead fish, okay? But on the way home, she talks about how she's going to cook you breakfast. She's crazy. I don't do well with crazy stocks. Even when Jared does and says, Tesla, give it, you know, $10 stop loss. I don't really do well. I don't feel comfortable trading Tesla. Now, I'll spread Tesla. Don't get don't don't do the sex things, okay? But I will. I'll spread Tesla. I'll do credit spreads. Test Tesla. I'll do zero DTEs on Tesla. I like to range my my Tesla. I like to range Amazon. I like to range Shopify. But I will not directionally trade crazy drunken stocks because that is something that's going to give me heartburn. It's going to make me feel uncomfortable. And if I feel really uncomfortable, I'm going to do what? 
I'm going to sell as quickly as possible. I'm not going to get the whole move. And if I don't get the whole move, what am I going to do? I'm going to end up revenge trading. So I know my trading triggers. I know when A causes B, which causes C. Now, be honest. How many of you know your own trading triggers? One, yes. Two, you're still trying to figure it out. Put that in the chat, okay? That's what I thought. Okay, so <clears throat> do you realize something? And I, and I can show it to you. And look, these guys have talked about it. Jared, I'm all talked about it over and over again. One of the greatest things is that when you learn how to date a stock, you're going to eliminate, okay, jittery trading behavior. Because what happens is, is that when Apple, if you watch Apple, sometimes Apple on the one minute chart has a huge 50 cent bar. And you say to yourself, well, God, it's never gonna go one to one or two to one on this. But if you watch Apple every single day, you realize you can, you can ignore that bar and get the smaller ones or get an RBI or something that fits your trading plan. Because in order to become a successful trader, you need to understand one thing, what your personality is and you need to be fearless, okay? Fearless is everything in life. We're never gonna be robots. We talk about trading like a robot. I'm gonna trade like a robot. I'm gonna trade like a robot. No, you're not. You're full of human emotions. You're never gonna trade like a robot. And the benefit of being full of human emotions is that every single candle, even if a, if, if a bot or an algorithm made that trade, it was programmed by somebody who wrote in every single time this stock goes below the 50 period moving average, it goes and retests the 50 period moving average, this bot is designed to go short. These people are designing it to go short. So what I do is I look at the mass consciousness. I take a look and I think to myself, what are other people seeing and what would other, how would other people follow other people? If you take a look at life, right? And one of the greatest experiments in human life is what we've just lived through, COVID. COVID is one of the greatest human experiments because it shows how mass consciousness thinks. How many times do you see people driving around with a mask in their car? How many times do you see people, you know, walk by you and they walk five feet away from you because they're terrified of getting sick? You've watched the greatest programming of human consciousness ever. So think about that. Traders are the same exact way. They've been programmed the exact same way. That's why charts are reoccurring patterns. Now we all know, and, and Jared and I will talk about it, just because the chart shows this pattern doesn't mean it's gonna work every single time. But if you start thinking of the psychology of what is being shown in front of you, if you see a giant bar, I look at the giant bar as Hercules. All right, man, it's a clearing bar, it's a giant, giant bar. It's strong, it's been pushed up by institutions. This bar is really, really strong. I'm gonna get in because this shows that other people are seeing this bar and what do most people do? Most people are sheep and most people follow. So if this giant bar comes in and it erases four other bars, I mean, literally is the size of four other bars and this giant, strong, badass bar comes in, I am sure as hell gonna get into this trade and I'm gonna trust that trade and I'm gonna be right probably 80% of the time. Why? Because I'm looking at mass consciousness and that's what you need to look at. Why do psychological numbers work out so well? Because mass consciousness thinks that way. So you need to get out of your own head and think about how other people are reacting. That's how you become fearless. That's how you start to understand that this business is based on psychology. And also when it comes down to psychology, you have to understand that other people are looking at the bars as well. How many of you, and let's talk about one of the biggest mistakes people make psychologically, okay? And I've done it as well, and it's a hard habit for me to break also. How many of you get really mesmerized once you get into a trade by the price action? Meaning you are watching that little, little box up there, and you're watching the price, and you're not watching the bar. How many of you put a one in there if you're more watching the price than watching the bar? Let me see who's let me see who's on that page. Go for it. Okay. Do you know why? Let me explain. Do you know why we do that? We do that because we have the need to be right. And not only that, we have the need to feel like the price is going in our direction. When in reality, we don't care about the price because if we have committed to that trade, if we've made a decision 
to go and take a trade, right? If we have outlined it and this trade is part of our plan and we believe in our plan, okay? And we're gonna stick with our plan and we're gonna stick to our words, right? And our plan is to go long, and I'm just doing this as an example, on a retest into the 20 period moving average, okay? And that's our plan. And we give it one bar of, we give it one bar of risk, and that risk is 40 cents. Well, then already we made a commitment of, let's say, 100 shares that we are willing to lose $40. I expect to lose $40. What's $40, guys? Come on. $40? That doesn't even buy you a tank of gas anymore, right? But the fact of the matter is, is that when we commit to that, and this is a big thing, when we commit to that, and we go in there, we break our word every single time if we are a junior, little, tiny, watching that box price trader. Because what happens is we realize, I'm up 10 cents, I'm down, I'm up 10 cents, I'm up 15 cents, oh my God, now it's going back to my entry, it's going back to my entry, I better get out, I better get out. Well, where is your commitment? Where is your commitment? You committed to a 40 cent stop loss. You committed to that trade. That trade hasn't shown you anything yet. You're not even watching the bars, whether you're on a two minute chart, a five minute chart, a 15 minute chart, depending on what product you, you trade. But you have not committed to it. And that's where a lot of people make the biggest mistake with their mental game is that they do not hold their own word at all. They do not commit to their word. And I am guilty of it as well, because what happens is that we so want to be right. We want to be in the money, especially if we've lost two trades before that, right? And what usually happens when we're watching that little price action, we get out, we make five cents, okay? Usually it's something so minuscule, it doesn't even buy you a Starbucks, okay? And then <clears throat> what happens next? The stock not only goes to what you thought would have been target, it just keeps going and you can ride the eight train to money. You know, the eight train or the nine EMA, that A train to money, man, that A train to money, it just keeps going up or keeps going down and you could have ridden it all the way. And what happens is when you don't commit to your word, that's when you truly feel like you've done it again. You have what I call I've done it again syndrome because what you're doing is you're evaluating yourself on a trade by trade basis, not evaluating yourself on a series of trades. And that's one of the biggest things that you need to do. When I was teaching men how to go and meet women, I used to look at them all the time. One rejection means nothing. 20 straight rejections means that you're not doing something right. You and every guru, every trading guru has always said this. You need to take out 20 trades. You need to literally commit to 20 trades. You need to write it down in your journal. How many of you have a journal? You need to keep a journal. You need to write down your trades. Every single trade needs to be written down. It has to be written down. And you need to do a series of trades, not just one trade and evaluation. Then you have the mental mind fuck where you're going absolutely nuts with yourself and you freeze and you don't take another trade, a series of trades. Because if you actually took a series of 20 trades and you actually did it with your plan and you actually allowed yourself to stop at and you actually watched bar by bar analysis, I guarantee you, that if you learned and embraced all the amazing technical lessons that Jared and Anmol have taught, you will be successful. You will get better every series of 20 trades. But the problem is, as human beings, we get stuck in our habits. We get stuck in our belief systems. We get stuck in who we are. We just plain and simple get stuck. And then our old habits, we're literally cavemen running around on a loincloth, and we think that this this saber-toothed tiger is going to come and kill us, and then we make up this fear. You see, there's real fear and this fake fear. I'm going to tell you what real fear is. Real fear is, okay, you're in the ocean, you're in Hawaii, it's absolutely a beautiful day, it's gorgeous, you're swimming, you're floating, and in the distance you see a fin. The fin is 100 yards away from you, the shore is 150 yards away from you, you're not on your home field any, anymore, and you've got to get your ass back into shore as quickly as possible before the shark comes and bites you right in the you-know-what. That's real fear. Fake fear is all the stuff that you have when you're trading. It's all the anxiety that comes up. It's you not sticking to your plan. It's you thinking the trade is going against you. It's you thinking that you were wrong and not wanting to be wrong. It's your need of validation. There's so much, and that's why you need to trust the bar by bar method. The bar by method is really great. What I want you to do, and this is a great exercise, okay? What I want you to do later is I want you to go and I want you to look at one of your trades in your plan, okay? And I want you to go and I want you to print it out. If you don't print it out, if you don't have a printer at home, go send it to your phone, take it to Kinko's, 
do you know it, it, it's print and go at fedex.com i think is the thing send it there and what i want you to do is i want you to do a color print it's going to cost you a buck and what i want you to do is i want you to look at your plan and i want you to look at that trade okay and i want you to draw the risk and a little circle around the risk okay just a little 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 tiny circle around the risk then what i want you to do is i want you to draw a box around the trade and the trade's probably going to go off like an angle like this it's going to have some sort of scoliosis curve to it and it's going to go like this right and i want you to draw the angle up there and then i want you to draw a head on top of that and long hair on top of that and what do you see you basically see a human being forming and at the bottom that little tiny rock down at the bottom is the risk what i want you to do is i want you to pin that up on your wall so you see the finished version of the trade because when we go back at the end of the day we take a look and we notice something that our trades work but in the heat of the moment we are not executing we are jittery we're nervous because once the losses start to compound as a human being we are become risk adverse and what happens is we start to trade like little tiny girls in skirts and for you women out there you can trade like a little tiny girl in skirt too so this is what i'm trying to get through to all of you that when you don't commit to it you have somebody who doesn't hold you accountable who will kick your butt on a weekly basis you will always be the trader that is nervous jittery mentally masturbating and truly not becoming as good as you could become because this is the in life most people do not have the support that they need in order to move forward because we do not self-regulate well as humans okay we have amnesia traders have amnesia and the fact of the matter is is that when we don't have a forum where we can sit there and literally get all this out and have somebody go over this all and somebody show you their trades and you look at the trades and somebody tell you where you mentally have gone wrong and give you exercises including i am statements including meditations nothing will ever change and never ever change because we will always continue to be emotional because when we're emotional we are not going to do well do you know my best trading day you know you know where i make the most of my money from two o'clock friday till four o'clock on friday i attack credit spreads and zero dtes like it's going out of style i mean i will go and i will kill it because i'll get closer to the market I'll do things. I'll get a little more risky. I know I'm running out of time because I'm really good at last minute. I like the pressure. I love the pressure. My best trading days are Monday and Friday. I'm okay on Tuesday. I'm okay on Wednesday and I'm okay on Thursday, right? But I like to start the week off really, really well and have a plan that I follow on Mondays to start the week off really, really well because psychologically it makes me feel really good. And then I kind of tread water a little bit, make a little bit of money Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then Friday, it's zero DTE day. I don't go to the gym. I don't do anything. And I do a trick that really works really well. I take a step back from my monitors and I watch. And I see the patterns like I see, like what's his name? That little kid saw dead people on that movie. What was that movie? Sixth Sense, right? Like he saw dead people, okay? I see the screens really, really well. And when you are spreading it on a Friday and you're doing zero DTEs, you can see the turn. You can go under the turn. There's so much that you can do. And one of the things is when you have a strength, you can then take that strength to the other days that you're just okay at. We all have better days. We all have days that we do better. But here's what's really funny. When you don't date certain stocks, when you're bouncing around, sleeping around every single day, you know, you're basically having mind sex with Apple one day, and then you have mind sex with RTX, and then you're having mind sex with Palantir, and then you're basically going to trade, you know, Adobe, you know, you don't even know how these stocks move. It's like, I know how Adobe moves. I trade credit spreads on Adobe. I could tell you how Adobe moves. Home Depot, I don't think I've lost a trade on Home Depot yet. Why? I know how Home Depot moves. I know it's ATR. If you don't know everything about those stocks, then basically you're going to war and you're going to battle something that's going to beat you because it's going to give you a little trick. It's going to do something that's going to give you a little mind, you know, you know what, at the right time, it's going to shake you out because you don't know that stock at all. So one of the things that there's some homework that I want all of you to do, and this is something when I coach people, is I give a lot of homework 
So then you can be accountable for what? For the homework that I give you, and then you can literally be accountable because if you're not accountable and you're pushing things off, things will never trade. So what I want you to do, okay, is I want you to pick five stocks, okay, that you're gonna watch over the next 30 days, all right? And at the end of each day, I want you to go and look at those charts. I want you to see those charts. I want you to see the way they make those moves. And I want you to understand what the ATR is. How do you scrape? And I love people who say, I want to be a scalper, right? Well, you can scalp certain stocks, but how do you know how much to scalp if you don't even know what their moves are? Do you know Twitter, usually you can get 25 to 30 cents out of a move and sometimes a little bit more, but I know that because I date Twitter on a regular basis. So let's say I want to go and make myself 250 bucks, right? Because I just need the money at that moment. And I got something going on that night. I need a couple hundred bucks, right? I'll go and take a look at, I'll look, I'll do a thousand shares and I'll do 25 cent move on Twitter. Do I care if it goes anymore? No. Am I making my risk reward? Yes. Is my risk predefined? Yes. Everything is predefined before I get into that trade. Otherwise I'm gonna go crazy. So that's why you need to find those stocks. You need to look at those patterns in that stocks and you need to look at a stock going, this is my, you know, break it down this way. This is my car payment stock, okay? Um, Home Depot is my, is my um, house payment stock, right? Costco is my, uh, my bill stock. Like I, if I just trade a Home Depot and Costco every single week, it, it pays all my bills, okay? So I've got that. Um, SPX, which I love, Jeff Yates credit spread. That's my money, you know, that's my money. And you also have to understand, you have to look at your risk factor and what I tell people all the time, go further away from the market, make a little less money as you get comfortable moving your way up from the market, make a little less money as you get comfortable moving your way up the deltas, five delta, you can go from one delta to two delta to three delta to four delta to five delta to 10 delta. You have to understand your risk tolerance. So if somebody gives you a trade, maybe you go less shares or you go a little further down in the credit spread and you make a little less money, but you start to build up that risk tolerance. It's just like going in meeting. When I, when I coached guys, I used to tell them all the time, I want you to go and talk to every single woman that you can possibly see, grandmother, mother, kid, whatever it is. So you can start building up your risk factor. So then when the beautiful girl goes through you know, your path, you're not scared, you're not nervous, you're not thinking about, oh man, oh man, I gotta, I gotta start from scratch. So there's so many things that you can do, and that's why it's really important to be realistic and respect your emotions in the market. Let me take a sip of water. You got to respect your emotions. I mean, a friend of mine the other day said to me, she looks at me, she goes, man, she goes, she goes you going to trade Tesla with me today? And I look at her and go, let me see. Okay, I said, I like to do my spreads on Tesla because I make money on Tesla, right? Um, all right, let me go directional. Do you know how many shares? And I'm talking, I got four years experience, guys. I mean, I got no problem trading now, but I don't directionally trade Tesla. So guess how many shares that I did on my Tesla directional trade? Put it in there. Let's see who gets it, okay? How many shares do you think I traded so I can learn how Tesla moves? Baron got it right away. Five. You got it. You got it. Five, and I gave myself a $10 stop loss, okay? So the most I can lose is $50. Why did I do that? Because I want to understand, because how many of you have traded Tesla? 860, oh my God, I got it at 860.01. Oh my God, it's at 855.21, three minutes later, right? That's when you start looking at all the, the little screen. You're not, you're not letting the trade work out. When you're doing five shares, you let it trade out. So what I do is I literally date a stock. I don't touch it. And then when I'm ready to play with it a little bit and I'm ready to see what it's all about, what do I do next? Very, very small share sizes. So then I can build the confidence because look, there's no difference. If you do five shares and you're giving a $10 stop loss, you're willing to lose $50. Let's say if your risk, let's say if your risk is $500, okay? You can multiply that when you have higher share sizes to make more money. But that's what I'm talking about. You gotta be realistic in your goals. You have to respect your emotions because if you're an emotional wreck, you will not do bar by bar. You're gonna be staring at the price. You're gonna be thinking about things. It's more gonna be survival. It's literally gonna be like that guy that I talked about in the Hawaii visual I just gave you. Close your eyes and think about Hawaii and think about swimming as fast as you possibly can away from that fin. That's what Tesla and that's what trading is for a lot of people when they're in fear mode. 
They're literally swimming away from a great white shark that's coming at them. They hear the music from Jaws, and the shark is going dun 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 dun, and they're just swimming, swimming. They're paddling, paddling. They're going, oh my god, 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 oh my god. And you, you literally feel chop, 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 chop behind. I gotta get out. I gotta get out. And you eject, and by miracle, you make it to shore. Trading doesn't need to be like that. Trading needs to be relaxing. If you're feeling anxiety, it means that you are not looking at where the anxiety is coming from. It means that you're not working on the anxiety. You're not journaling about the anxiety. You're not talking about your feelings because it's not a manly thing. We're supposed to go in there and slay the market. We want to be, you know, ax capital from billions. You know, we want to be able to like absolutely kill the market. We want to be the wolf of Wall Street, who, by the way, was my workout partner in college. And if you want to know another time, I'll tell funny stories about Jordan Belfort. So you want to slay it and kill it because most of you are men in this. And men want to prove that they are strong. But the fact of the matter is, is that the stock market will bring you to your knees and literally turn you into an absolute little scared girl. That's what the market does. It rips you apart because it doesn't teach you the mental game that you need. And that's why a lot of the times you'll listen and you'll see Jared get into a trade and you'll see I'm all getting to a trade and the trade doesn't work out for you the exact same way it works out for them because they have prepared themselves mentally over the years and most people have not prepared themselves mentally. If you Google it on YouTube, there's just no real courses, classes, groups, sessions. There's no community that is sitting there and literally breaking this down on a regular basis. There's no place to meet where you can go and you can vent this and somebody can actually tell you this is what you're doing wrong mentally because the mental game is everything. Tom Brady is Tom Brady because he was mentally prepared. Ryan Leaf was Ryan Leaf because his mental game sucked. You show me any athlete and I've coached a lot of I've coached a lot of high rollers in my life, okay? I've coached athletes, I've coached actors, I've coached big time you know, lawyers and everything else. But mentally, when their weakness shows up, it was really hard to get past that mental weakness unless they had a coach. When you don't have a coach, you are not getting past that mental weakness because it's really hard to look yourself in the mirror every single day. And it's really hard to build that trust with yourself. That trust is unbelievable. When I journal and I look at things, I realize, that I did not do something that day. That's right, Farron. Market exposes the weaknesses you never knew you had. Absolutely. When I journal at the end of the day, man, you should see my stuff and I'll share it with you guys. You know, it's, you know we're, we're gonna have an incredible community here and I will share my journal with all of you so you know that I still make mistakes. I still work on things because I truly believe when I decided to start trading, I wanted a business that exposed my weakness on a daily basis that would make me a stronger, more powerful version of myself than I ever was before. Because the business I had before, I was a master at it. I was top of my game. And every dating coach that's out there now copied me. I was the first guy in there. I'm proud of that, right? But I needed something that inspired me, that taught me. Because when I got into trading, the first thing I said to myself is that one day, I am going to be coaching the mindset behind trading because I think that is the most incredible thing in the world to give all of you this abundant mindset so you understand the weaknesses that are holding you back and how you can trust yourself. So in my journal every single day, I will journal something and then that night I will play some really funky trippy music, okay? I will go on my pulse machine, Google PEMF, you'll see this cool machine that I have, and I will sit and I will listen to a meditation that I did reprogramming me, my, my mind because the thought that you go to sleep with at night is the thought that you will reprogram your mind with during the day. The last thought, the last thing you listen to. That's why in the morning when I wake up, I'm like, I'm so ready to trade. I'm so ready to do this. I'll listen to the meditation again in the morning. And when I listen to the meditation in the morning, I see the charts. I mean, I've literally got a song, you know, long above the 50. I mean, I'm not going to sing it right now. Ride the eight train of money, ride the eight train of money. And I do things in repetitive times, ride the eight train to money. And I snap my fingers because that's all part of NLP. It's all part of learning. Ride the eight train to money, ride the eight train to money, ride the eight train to money. Guess what I'm doing there? I'm reprogramming my mind so I'm not looking at the price action. Because if I'm riding the eight train to money, who cares about the price action? Because the eight train is going to ride me to money while the price action is going to ride me to what? Drinking. It's going to ride me to fear. It's going to ride me down. It's going to break me up. It's going to make me feel exposed. 
it's going to bring my weaknesses back. So I'm riding the A train to money. So I'm reprogrammed the way my subconscious mind works and I'm reprogramming it. So I'm able to go and do what I'm committed to do because that's what it's all about. And that's what mental toughness is in trading. There's another thing that I do too. And then I'm going to take some questions. Okay. Because I can go on and on, guys. I, I could talk about this for like six, seven hours, but power hour is coming up at three o'clock. And all of you, all of you are going to make money between three and four. Why? What are you looking for between three and four? I'm going to give you a tip. What does the spy do between three and four during this corrective phase of the market? The spy goes crazy. It's like a drunken girl. It's going to pick a direction. It's either going to go up, down, and you're going to get at least 50 cents out of the spy. That's what I want you to shoot for, a very realistic goal, but make sure you stick to your plans. The SPY is going to bring you money. See what I'm doing? I'm programming your mind to look at the SPY. I'm programming your mind to look at the SPY because that's the play from three to four. It's been the play from three to four every single day since this market decided to top out. So there's one more thing I want to teach you about, and it's something that I stole from Mel Robbins. Mel Robbins is a really amazing woman, and she does the 54321 rule. And this is the greatest rule. You can look it up on YouTube, and it's one of the greatest things that I do, and it's something that I teach, and I go a little deeper, and I've got my own version of it. But basically, okay, when you're going to execute a trade, you know, and you're sitting there going, oh, I don't know if it's going to work, but hey, if it fits your plan, this is what you need to do. It fits my plan. It fits my plan. This trade fits my plan. Five, four, three, two, one, hit the button. Five, four, three, two, one, hit the button. If you do not hit the button after five, four, three, two, one, you know what you need to do? You need to get your butt off of the chair and you need to go and take a walk. You don't need to be looking at the trade again. You don't need to sit there and give yourself that mental validation. Oh, you see, it worked out. How many of you are like really good at what? Hey, my trade worked out. Right. We don't need all that. What we need is execution. And that's something that I work on when I do group coaching is I work on execution, getting over the weaknesses so you're able to execute and have a safe place to really expose. Wouldn't it be amazing, type one or two, wouldn't it be amazing to be, if you think it'd be amazing to be part of a community where you're able to share your stories and have somebody like myself answer all your questions and find accountability partners in that and have somebody and have a place that you're accountable for every mental weakness that you have. It, it's literally, picture me as Bill Belichick. I'm gonna kick your ass every single every single week. How many of you would like that? Type one, if you think that's something that would really help you. That's awesome, we have one woman here, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. I like that. Mostly guys in here, which I always thought, but I like women. Women make great traders. Hi, Barbara Love. Barbara, good name. Barbara Love. Barbara showing some love. All right. So now we got a little, little bit of time left because what are we going to do in 13 minutes? We are going to go do, oh, Rhonda Pope. Hey, Rhonda. We're going to go do Power Hour. What are we going to do Power Hour? Power Hour, we're going to watch the spy. We're going to turn off all our screens and we are going to watch the spy. We're going to watch the index. Is the index fund going to move? Are we going to get a pop into the close? What are we going to do into the close? We're going to get the volatility into the close. That's what your goal is today is to watch one. Now, over the next 12 minutes, I want to take your questions, okay? So who's got a question? Sexy time. So I, ZTE. I don't know. What is ZTE? I don't even say ZTE. Where is ZTE? Do I need to Google ZTE? Is it a is it a is it a stock a ZTE? Let me take a look. I have absolutely no idea what ZTE is. DTE, <laughs> zero DTE. Yes, there's zero DTEs. Okay, they're basically every single exactly Kevin days to expiration. Okay, so I do really well in credit spreads on zero days to expiration. I pick my usual suspects. Amazon, Tesla, Adobe, NVIDIA, Google. I look for premium and I find premium that I can sell above the market if it's going down. Exactly. Theta killer or uh, underneath the market if it's going up. I put myself far enough away and I make sure that I look at higher time frames. So I'm not sitting there at 340 going, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. You know, that's because, look, we all know. Here's the thing about credit spreads and Jeff tells you over and over again. 
your risk to reward sucks on credit spreads, but you'll make a lot of money on credit spreads if you're careful and cautious and you understand, okay, that you got to watch them sometimes. They're like a drunken girl and they can go a little crazy at times, right? But what happens is, is that you need to be very, very careful with credit spreads, okay? So FOMO haunts my subconscious. Once I get a couple of losses back, back, I search a menu. Yeah, oh, you sure do, Jacob. And that's what I did too. So first off, Jacob, okay, here's what you do. Once you have a couple of losses back to back, you need to write them down and you need to do a series of trades. You need to stay with your plan. If your plan, whatever your plan is, Jacob, whatever your trading plan is, you're not allowed and you need to write this down. I will not take a trade unless it's based on my trading plan. And you need to take 20 trades based on your trading plan because here's what's happened, okay? You may have two losses in a row, three losses in a row, but if you stick with your trading plan, guess what happens? If you lost one R, let's say you lost three R, okay, in your first three trades, right? And then your and then your next trade is a home run winner and you make three R. You're now even, all right? But what happens is, is that you do not, what you do is you manufacture because you want to get even and you want to get back because what happens is, Jacob, is that you're allowing your emotions and you're allowing your masculinity, okay? What you're doing is you're, you're letting your manhood, like, oh, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to kill that person. I'm going to beat that stock. Oh, Coinbase beat me. I'm going to go get Coinbase back, right? Instead, you need to look at it as a series of trades. And that's what I talk about in coaching, okay? is a series of trades. We need to do a series of trades before we evaluate ourselves. We can't evaluate ourselves over three little trades because if we do that, it's the same thing that guys would do when I was teaching them to meet women. They would go and get blown out three times and they wouldn't do it again because they would constantly go, oh man, this isn't for me. So you need to practice the series of trades. If you're manufacturing a trade, you need to catch yourself. And if you manufactured a trade, you need to write it down in that moment, take a break, get up from your seat and go like this and go, oh, I did it again. I manufactured a trade. Take a break. Go to your kitchen. Get away from the screen. Take a five minute break. Go outside, yell and scream, run, jump up and down, get the blood going and realize that trading is an abundant thing. Your trades are always going to show up. And that's something that you need to say over and over again to yourself. I am, and my trades will show up over and over again, so I don't need to manufacture a trade. Okay, so that's another one. You talk more about, um, do trading change your life? Yes, that's a great one, okay? Trading did change my life in so many ways. I am so honest with myself. I am more blunt than I've ever been in my entire life. Um, I am okay with losses. I hated to lose. I'm a competitive person. Um, it's made me a better partner with, in my relationships. It's made me a better dad. It just made me more aware of my things. It's, it's like, I, I now feel like I'm at a higher vibrational human being than I ever was before. And I could talk about this for hours. Okay. Um, how do you stop it? And I'll talk about it more during our group coaching. Um, if I'm so scared to take a trade, not feeling confident, I'm seeing is good play. Definitely struggle. Same thing, Adam, five, four, three, two, one. Hit the button, buy. Five, four, three, two, one. Hit the button, buy. It is, if it's a good play, what you need to do, Adam, this is homework for you, okay? And this is part of what the group coaching is going to be, guys, is that, Adam, I got group, I got a great homework assignment. And when we do the group coaching, you guys are all going to do the same homework assignment. Because if Adam's feeling it, if we're honest, other people are feeling it too. So, Adam, what I want you to do is I want you to print out the good plays that you saw that you did not take, right? And what I want you to do is I want you to create a trading book and I want you to create it based on the good trades that you did not take. And on the back of each page, I want you to write down the emotions that you were feeling at the time. Okay, what emotions were you feeling at the time? Um, you're going to see a, a repetitive pattern. It might not be trusting yourself. There might be something, I mean, we can go even deeper in the subconscious. It might be something that was programmed into you since you were a kid. You know, you just don't really trust what you see. You don't trust your own instincts. It's the way that you've learned. You know, you don't, you have a fear of making money or fear of losing money. What happens is that the more we write on the back, we find the same issue over and over again. And then what happens is you know what your feeling is. So then you know how to literally go and tackle it. And then when you look at it, you realize, wait a second, these are my beautiful place. Like if you guys saw my office, which I'll show you guys during group coaching sessions, I'll show you my office. It's like a beautiful mind. I've got charts everywhere on my walls okay i mean i don't even care like what my room looks like the rest of my house is really super neat my office has like 
all these rules and regulations and things. So when I'm sitting in here and I'm doing my meditation and stuff like that, I can look and I can see my rules and the whole number poke through, you know, which I did yesterday when I shorted MU and made like 50 cents, right? Because I just missed the move up, but I wanted to make it. I got all these rules and regulations up there and it really, really helps that, right? Uh, let's take another one. What time is it? Oh, we've got a few more minutes left. Okay, feeling it's a fear of losing money. Okay, fear of loss. We all have fear of loss, fear of losing money. Let me tell you something. Don't trade if you fear losing money. And it's not losing money. It's not losing money. You've got to reframe it. You're not losing money. You're investing in yourself. You're investing in your future. You're investing in, in yourself to make money. You're investing in yourself. So the fact is, if you're risking $100, okay, if you're risking $100, you're investing in your future. If $100 is too high, you're over share sizing. So you're never going to do well. You have to invest in yourself what you're willing to lose. You need to say to yourself, what's $100 to me? And you listen to Anmol, what his, risk, what his risk is. He doesn't care. It doesn't matter. It's like he's got a higher risk than a lot of other people. My risk, it depends. You know, I mean, it, it, it honestly, my risk is probably two to 250 a trick, okay? Um, I will change it a little bit, but it's either two to 250 on a trade because to me, that's nothing. It's nothing. You need to have a number that's going to be very easy for you to manage, okay? All right? All right, so we're actually getting close to power hour. I want you guys to make money, and there's a lot of questions, okay? A lot. We're going to be doing this every single week. Every week, we're going to have this unbelievably ridiculous mental toughness mindset session to get you prepared for your trading days every single time. We're also going to have a community where you can post questions. And those questions are questions that I will answer in audios so you can listen to it. Because when you listen to something over and over again, it's the power of six. When you hear something six times over and over again, you're going to learn, you're going to learn it because it's something that you're going to hear. And you can listen to these lessons while you're driving. Because the mental, the mental game is all about repetition and I am the king of teaching repetition. Not only that, there will never be a question that will be unanswered. Meaning if you want me to do a video and you want me to break down the emotions of the chart, okay? Or whatever it might be, we are gonna set up a community and I am gonna be the one holding you accountable with your mental side of the game. So then when you jump into the chat room every single morning, you're not gonna hesitate. You're gonna push the button. You're gonna trust. You're gonna allow. If you're doing three R all or nothing, whatever your plan says, you're gonna stick with that plan. You're gonna absolutely love Jared and Amal's lessons even more because you will have the mental part of the game taken care of. Not only that, you'll have a community of like-minded people that you'll be able to bounce things off of and have somebody that will go and have zero judgment, because that's what I'm about. No judgment at all. And the cool thing about it is this is less than a tank of gas every single month. And it's something that I think all of you are going to benefit from. Because when I go and I commit to you, if you know, you know, guys don't know me that well, but when I commit to people. I commit to them. I go way past, like Jeff, like that's what I love about Jeff Yates, to them. I go way past, like Jeff, like that's what I love about Jeff Yates. I mean, how many of you love the videos that Jeff Yates do, does every single night and sends it to you? Imagine you're getting the same type of videos based on the mental game, because I will look at all your questions and I will do a video and I will send it to your email so you can listen to it. Imagine that. Imagine being able to hold the stock market in your hands and know that you've got this mental side, that you're tough, that you can deal with the shakeout, that you can understand what Jared and Anmol are really teaching you. You can succeed so much. So you need to group, you need to get on that link, wherever that link was. You guys put that link up one more time, please, for everybody right there. Okay, you need to get on the link. The link is right there in the in the um, in the chat. And what you need to do is you need to literally get on that 
and I look forward to being your coach. I look forward to seeing you every single week. I look forward to answering your questions. I look forward to going over the mental game, but just keep this in mind, and I'm gonna leave you with this. Imagine having a place that you can feel safe, that you can literally go out every single day and know that your mental questions, your emotional questions, and your mindset is being handled. Imagine right now, and this is one of the exercises that I'm gonna be doing with you guys in coaching. I'm gonna give you a 30 day goals. I'm gonna give you 60 day goals. I'm gonna give you 90 day goals. We're gonna script out your mental trading plan. You've got your trading plan done. If you listen to what Jared says, you got that plan done. Now you need the mental side to follow that and we're gonna have a mental trading plan. You're gonna be one tough man or woman because you're gonna succeed because this is by far the greatest business in the entire world. But when you don't have accountability and you don't have somebody there kicking your butt and you don't have your Bill Belichick kicking your ass every single day, you're never gonna succeed in that. So no questions will ever go unanswered. You'll get videos sent to your email. You know, if you want one a day video sent to your email because a lot of questions came in, I don't care, I'll record a video and it'll be sent to your email. We'll have a weekly Zoom call every single week that will go for an hour to an hour and a half. And we will sit there and we will go over the mental side of this game so you can have the most abundant, incredible trading career because this is the greatest business in the entire world because there is absolutely no ceiling at all. You can make as much money as you want as long as your mind allows you. And I'm gonna do meditations, like really good meditations that I have. I, I mean, I've, I've, I've recorded so many meditations that you guys are just gonna get all these different meditations, right? And I'm gonna create a meditation every single week that you can listen to and you can close your eyes and you can imagine. And I do it to some really great music and I'll take music requests. I love coaching guys. This is what I'm all about. Okay. I've been coaching for 24 years. So trading coaching is my thing. You know, it's no different. You're going to date the market. You're going to conquer the market. And now we head to power hour. So I will see all you guys in the group coaching sessions and all of you need to go and you need to watch the spy for the next hour, small share size it. If you're not used to trading the spy and you can conquer it all, make some money, but write down your emotional state of mind when you're in a trade because you are going to be rock solid with my help. I'll see you guys on the next call.